Peg's scary stories. Let's begin. As raindrops hit the window, Pepper's family was gathered indoors, enjoying their time together. They were expecting the rain to pass soon. Hey, the Pepper and Pig family. How fun it would be to jump in muddy puddles the next morning. Little did they know, a devastating loss was about to strike them. <sighs> that day, as everyone was getting ready for bed, the What's rain happen? continued to pour throughout the night. In the morning, an excited Pepper ran out of the house, ready to jump in muddy puddles. However, as she stepped outside, she oh, noticed that there was a massive flood surrounding <laughs> their home, with no other dry land in sight. Daddy Pig did not Dude, imagine this tsunami either, would have jumped him? out of the house crazy. right into the water. It was the worst flood the Peppa Pig family had ever witnessed. As they discussed their situation, they realized that their mobile phones were not working, yeah, well, leaving them completely isolated. Damn, Unable they're stranded swim, out there, bro. And with nowhere within walking distance, they decided to wait it out. Mummy Pig started to prepare breakfast, but discovered that there wasn't much food left. Psh. They had been planning to go to the supermarket that day. Mummy Pig estimated that they had about two days worth of food left. She also predicted that in two days, the water level would recede enough for them to walk to their neighbors or for help to arrive. Dang. So there was no need to panic. They're gonna have to However, sacrifice someone. As the next night fell, more rain poured down, causing the pig parents to worry. I would sacrifice Daddy Pig, he's the, the water biggest one. The level hadn't decreased at all. By the end of the second day, the situation was the same. On the third morning, there was no improvement. No help had arrived. The water hadn't subsided, and they had run out of food. There Seeing was George for sad makes me sad, George bruh. took a few sips of ketchup from a bottle just oh, to have yeah. something in his stomach. I like drinking ketchup out the bottle too, On you know? On the fourth day, hunger began to take its toll. Peppa, weakened by exhaustion, started to feel oh, sick. Oh, she got monkeypox. She had contracted some sort of illness. George and the parents were holding up well. By the fifth day, Peppa did not leave her room anywhere. The parents could endure not having food but they were afraid for their children. In addition to hunger, they suffered from utter boredom. Towards the evening oh, of sixth day, George that boy looks fell stale. ill, his young body unable to handle the lack of food. Parents was crying that day, which upset George, feeling powerless in the situation. George woke up on the seventh morning to a strange smell coming from the kitchen. Bro, he looks great. His parents told him that they had found some food for him, his first proper meal in five days. It was strange food, unlike anything George had ever eaten before. The texture was soft and chewy. Perhaps it was the extreme hunger, or perhaps it was the oh. taste itself, but he found it delicious. The parents watched him with empty stares. <laughs> Suddenly they heard a voice from the street. Grandpa Pig had arrived in a small boat bringing food supplies. He was relieved to find his family, but it was too late. The family was now missing no! one member. <laughs> they sacrificed Pepper, This bro. terrible day started <laughs> that is with twisted, an unremarkable man. rain. Pepper and George were waiting for the rain to end so they could go outside to play. They did not yet know how this day would turn out. They waited for the sun to come out and Another asked rainy day? if Holy they could crap. go for a walk. When they left the house, they found puddles left by the rain and started to jump in them, as they had done many times before. However, that day they decided to try to find the biggest puddle. They walked further and further away from home. They went so far that their parents could Stranger no longer see Stranger danger. Them. Where y'all going, George man? George saw a big puddle and wanted to jump in it, but Peppa stopped him. She wanted to make sure the puddle was safe enough for him, but Don't she didn't do it. think about her own safety. That was the worst mistake of the day. Her whole body sank into the puddle. Oh. A nose was barely visible on the surface of the puddle from the recently cheerful pig. George Dang, so couldn't contain his horror and started to cry. He realized that help was needed as soon as possible. He could hardly remember the way Bro, home. Bro, stop crying and help her out. Direction. There you go. After some time, he did not notice a puddle under his feet and fell into it himself. Oh, no. He was pulled up to his waist in mud. He couldn't get out no matter how hard he tried, but the upper half of his body was free. All he could do was scream and call for help from the puddle. Because George Dude. had run too far away from his parents, they couldn't hear him. An hour after Peppa Pig and her brother went for a walk, Mummy Pig started to worry. She talked about it with Daddy Pig, and they went out to look for their children. After 20 minutes of searching, they reported their children missing. After that, every resident started looking for Peppa and George. Damn, that's the crazy, bro. They both got trapped. Hours, and even helicopters were involved. George was the first to be spotted by Daddy Pig, who heard faint cries for help, approached, and saw him. George was in a state of hypothermia, 
He had caught a cold from the damp and was exhausted. Dude, frozen. Daddy Pig pulled him out and tried to find out Doing where Peppa was. Doing the mannequin challenge. George himself has slurred speech due to his age, but because he had been in the mud for several hours, all that could be understood from his speech was that something terrible had happened to Peppa. Then George slowly started walking in one direction, at the same puddle where Peppa got stuck. There was nothing on the surface of the puddle, as there were no footprints nearby. Since then, no one likes to jump in muddy puddles anymore. Dude, that Peppa thing ate her. <laughs> loves to visit the amusement park during holidays, having a wonderful time. But this time, something went wrong and turned out very, very badly. This is the balloon ride incident. As soon as they arrived, they saw Mrs. Rabbit doing a raffle. Peppa bought a ticket and won the balloon ride with her family. Peppa dreamed of trying a hot air balloon ride, and now her dream was coming true. As they began their flight, turn into a Mrs. Nightmare. Rabbit said it was her first time flying a balloon. Daddy Pig was alarmed by this. He thought about stopping the flight and going back, but he didn't want to spoil Peppa's fun. Once they were high enough, it turned out that Mrs. Rabbit didn't even know how to use the map, which further showed her incompetence. Bro, what? <laughs> Looking around, Peppa Dude, dropped her is... favorite toy. Oh, I, can't... I thought it was a dog to for go a second. down to find it. <laughs> Daddy Pig lifted Teddy from the tree. But at that moment, no one was looking where the balloon was going. The balloon got stuck oh. in a tree. There was no one in sight. They were alone in the middle Wait, of the forest. How did it crash into a tree, though? <laughs> After studying the map, Daddy Pig realized that they were very far from everyone. They called for help with a loudspeaker for several hours, but no one answered. At this point, Daddy Pig decided that due to the distance from the others, they could wait for help for days. So he'd better carefully climb down the tree and go for help. However, when he climbed down the tree, not, not a good his idea, bro. Slipped, and in an attempt to grab the tree, he oh. badly scratched his hands and That's finally gotta burn. fell. As soon as he regained consciousness, he felt pain. Oh, he broke his, his leg legs, bro. His family was shocked, but he said that the bruises were minor and that he would be able to get to the help broke he needed so badly. Broke his own ankles, bro. Look at that. At that moment, this idea seemed good to him because of the adrenaline rush. His pain was dulled. His family dissuaded him but he walked in the direction of the nearest settlement. At first he walked with a limp, then began to crawl, then stopped. Peppa Pig watched as his body lay motionless, not responding to being called. Dang. Mrs. Rabbit realized that it was all her fault. It she was her fault. She decided to climb down the tree to give Daddy <laughs> Rest her right aid. now. She had rock climbing skills, but she did not take into account that there were traces of Daddy Pig's blood on the tree. Oh, she slipped. From which she slipped and fell right on her neck. Her body lay motionless. She slipped on her neck, though. Peppa way. and George cried. <laughs> it was too dangerous to climb down themselves, and all that remained was to hope that help would come. Help arrived about an hour after the incident. Grandpa the Pig, shout out to Grandpa Pig, going, bro. He's always rescuing and him. And after it did not return for a long time, they became worried and went in that direction. Love your grandparents. That day, they lost They'll always come to rescue. persons. When the snowflakes that was began crazy, to fall man. from the sky, and the streets and houses are gradually wrapped in snow, Peppa Pig's family feels the unique atmosphere of the upcoming Christmas. During these moments, Peppa likes to spend time with her beloved brother, George. However, <laughs> from that day on, she would never be able to play with him oh, again. Oh, what happened? This is the story of a missing person, the investigation of which dragged on for several months. It all started with unremarkable snow. Peppa and George ran outside to play in the snow. They were enjoying the winter. The snow was very deep that day. Winter. After they had played enough, they decided to return home. But George did not go in. When Peppa had lunch, she decided to go back outside and saw a big snowball. She realized that George that had started building snowball. the snowman without her, but most likely got tired and went home. She completed the snowman with head and then came to her room to Wait, show where's the George? snowman to George. But he wasn't there. She got worried and told her parents. The parents went to look oh, for George. Yeah. They couldn't find George. When they called the police, no. the investigation has begun. <laughs> the police could not find any traces of George due to the fact that the parents had already trampled around while searching. They could only find the blue hat left by George. A month passed, followed by another, but no one could find George. What A made month run later? Away? And where is he now? That's crazy, bro. When Peppa went home, he decided to return for some reason. But the way out of the house goes down the slope. He fell during the descent. He turned into the, the giant the mountain, snowball. He did not stop when falling and began to tumble down the mountain. 
snow began to stick to him, gradually forming a ball. That is insane, man. When that ball of snow with George He's inside just frozen stopped, in there. George couldn't even move. He could barely breathe. He was lying without oxygen, unable to move and in the freezing cold. It's a terrible situation. He was probably alive when Pepper was building the snowman. Oh, that's crazy, bro. But he crazy, couldn't call bro. for help from Pepper, who was decorating the snowman in the meantime. No one has touched the snowman since then. However, it could not stand forever. And one warm spring morning, oh. Pepper went for a walk. She's going to find him, right? Yep. Since then, she has been afraid of snowmen, of what might lurk inside them. Pepper's family Dude, that was spending time twisted, together. Man. This time, they were playing hide and seek. No one could have guessed how badly it would oh, end. Oh, the hide and seek game? <laughs> it all started with George not being the best player. <laughs> He decided to hide under the table. Pepper immediately found him and scolded him for hiding poorly, saying that next time That is a very terrible spot, George. Place. Come on, man. Next time he was hiding, he decided to find the most unexpected place. He thought he would definitely win. His parents encouraged him, and he went to find a place to hide. He ran into his parents' room and saw a quite tall vase. He figured that if he could fit in there, Pepper wouldn't be able to find him. He brought a chair, stood on it, and began to climb into Not the vase. Not the brightest first. idea, man. <laughs> However, he couldn't. He got stuck upside down, unable to get out. He started to worry and was about to call for help, but he thought if he could just squeeze a bit further, he could flip over into the wider bottom of the vase. He squeezed as much as he could, Ooh. exhaling the remaining air from his lungs. He pushed a bit further, but not all the way. The situation only got worse. He realized he couldn't get out and tried to scream, but couldn't. There was no air oh, left that's in his crazy, lungs, man. and he couldn't even breathe properly because his body was compressed. His heart pounded from anxiety, worsening the situation because the vase had limited oxygen, which was quickly depleting over time. He waited and waited for Pepper to find him. Every second felt like an eternity. Finally, Pepper entered the room and saw the top part of George sticking out of the vase. Or he probably suffocated already. Pepper was happy that she had found him and laughed at him for choosing a conspicuous hiding spot again. However, George didn't react at all. He didn't move his legs or make any sounds. Peppa realized something was wrong. She stood on a chair and tried to reach him with her hands, but the vase slipped and fell to the ground, shattering. Peppa watched as her motionless brother lay among the vase shards, the shards embedded oh. in his hands, legs, stomach, and face. A red puddle quickly formed on the floor. Peppa immediately screamed, calling <laughs> for their parents' help. They were shocked and rushed George to the hospital. He received numerous stitches, lay in a coma for several days, but he survived. Scars remained on his body, reminding him of that day. He no longer enjoyed playing hide and seek. Pepper and George pretty crazy he actually survived outside, that. Outside, but on this day, leaving the house was the worst decision. The storm caused terrible losses to their family. That day, Pepper went with George for a picnic outside. They took toys with them, and under the sunny weather, they ate cookies with juice. Cookies with as juice, that's pretty finished, nasty. <laughs> they heard thunder. A storm was approaching, and Mummy Pig called them to go home as quickly as possible. Daddy Pig wasn't worried about it, but the sky was getting darker and darker. But then it turned out that Peppa a had left a toy in the garden, and Daddy Pig went to retrieve it, not thinking about his safety. He went oh, down he's going to get struck by lightning, then, huh? Lightning struck. Bam! Lightning struck a tree he was Got standing too close sizzled into to. bacon. No, he didn't. He fell unconscious. His family watched this happen. Pepper and George were scared, and Mummy Pig ran to call an ambulance. But when she dialed the number, no, she set. realized that the connection wasn't working because of the storm. Everything always she goes told bad Pepper for them. She stayed at home, and she herself ran to Daddy Pig. He lay unconscious under the cold rain, but he had a pulse. Mummy Pig was glad that he was alive. She thought she could carry him home. Yeah, he's a pretty heavy guy, bro. Him, she couldn't do it. She should have tried rolling him. He weighed too much, and the path home was slippery from the rain. She could never have carried him up the hill to the house. Mummy Pig ran to the nearest neighbors, leaving George and Pepper alone. They sat at home and shuddered at every roll of thunder. Meanwhile, Damn, so they're just Pig watching their dad out there on he the floor. He began to regain consciousness, but was paralyzed. Because the rain didn't stop, a puddle oh, began to fall himself. under him. I'm just getting his water. When Mommy Pig tried to move him, 
She left him face down. Oh no, he's now in addition drowning. to hypothermia from the cold and wetness. His face was pressed right into the mud. And he can't move because he got breathe. struck by lightning. Almost an hour later, the storm had already ended. And at that time, Mummy Dude, Pig that... with Dr. Brown Bear. But Daddy Pig was no longer breathing. That was very <laughs> After dark, a long time, man. Mummy Pig continues to blame herself for this. And Pepper and George will never stop being afraid of thunder. Wow. It all started when Daddy Pig was tired. He was tired of work and family, and he wanted to be alone for a day. This day, he was able to take a day off from work and go Boy, to the forest hungry? instead. It was a place where he could have some quiet time to himself. He took some food and his phone and went to the forest. He went to the forest without telling anyone. Well, that's not a good this idea. This is the reason for the horrible situation he got into. Ooh. He stopped the car in the middle of the road and walked into the woods. Here he could think without the distractions of family. He walked deeper and deeper into the forest until he finally found a clearing. He laid out a picnic on it, but suddenly remembered that he had forgotten his lighter in the car to start a fire. It was far enough away from the car, but he decided to walk there and back. There was no sign of trouble. He walked the same route, but halfway there he heard a crunch. Oh. Oh. Just got smacked by a tree? <laughs> what? Now Daddy Pig was lying on the grass, pinned down by the massive tree. He couldn't move to get out. The tree was pressing down on him so hard that he could barely breathe. For such cases, he has a phone in his backpack. All he has to do is get it out and call for help. He opens his backpack but doesn't find his phone. Bruh. Daddy Pig left his phone at the picnic site. Why would you leave it now, there, bro? He has no hope of salvation. He screamed, calling for help, but there was no one in the woods. The next day, his back began to hurt seriously. He began to suffer from hunger and lack of movement. He could put up with the hunger, but the next morning he ran out of water. Oh, that's not good. He stayed thirsty until the evening until it started to Ooh, rain. Collect that rainwater. He collected rainwater in a bottle. The pain was constant, but what truly tormented him was the fear of never seeing his family again. So he survived day by day, growing weaker and weaker. It had been at least a week. He had stopped counting the One days. One week later in the heaven, he lay like, there and imagined that he would be gone. Wondered where he's at. He should have told everyone where he was going. He should have kept his phone with him at all times. At that moment, he felt that he could breathe freely, and gripped by hope, he tried again to get out from under the tree. He succeeded. Oh wow! He had lost a terrible amount of weight, which allowed him to squeeze through. Now he was free, but days of lying in one position had taken their toll. He couldn't get up. His body had weakened and all he could do was crawl. He could crawl to the car, but the picnic has food and a phone. That's all he needs. It's probably expired it by now. Way. It's been a week. It was incredibly difficult. With every movement, he had a feeling he was about to pass out. But the thought that he would be able to eat and call for help motivated him. However, when he crawled, he realized a terrible thing. The food he laid out had already rotted or been eaten by birds. He tried to call his family, but the phone was broken. Br Perhaps it happened because of the water that got on it during the rain. Daddy yeah, that Pig makes sense. might have guessed, but he was no longer guided that by reason. That darn rain, bro. He should have crawled to the car then, although it is unlikely that he could drive a car in such a state. Drive now, with your feet, bro. all he could do was crawl and crawl towards the car, hoping that he could get out of the forest. Damn. I had a salad made for this morning. But I dreamed of something more substantial, something that would fit my nature. I know I'm not allowed to eat meat. That's how we live here. But sometimes I can't stand it. A wolf should eat meat. Vegetarian cave, wolf. Nestled deep in the forest was a place where I could hide my true nature from the eyes of my neighbors. You can never trust there were a wolf, a lot of bro. ducks in the lake nearby. Don't trust I that knew man. I had to be careful. If anyone walked by and noticed what I was doing, they might kick me out of here or do something worse to me. That's why I go hunting very early, when everyone is still asleep, and the ducks have just arrived at the lake. He'd be eating the all the ducks? <laughs> I waited, and finally I saw a duck. The duck came out what of the, the lake. What the duck, bro? Come on. And I jumped on it. When I got to the cave, the duck was still moving in my mouth, bleeding. This man Back is in my cave, savage. I started butchering the duck. The air was filled with the smell of fresh meat. 
which I had already forgotten in this vegetarian world. I worked fast. I need to hurry. I shouldn't have been caught doing this. There are no feathers left on the duck. The skin was torn in places. The internal organs have already been extracted. When I was about to make a fire to roast it, I heard the sound of footsteps outside. My heart skipped a beat. Someone was walking right towards my cave. Who is it? What does he want from Betty's me? Betty's hoping his daddy pig. I turned around. <laughs> so he can have a feast. It was George. Oh no, he was following little the George. blood trail. How could I forget and leave such traces? Why is George me? always at the wrong I hit place the at the wrong time? The rock, trying not to leave any evidence. He was still standing at the exit, not daring to enter the dark cave. But he still got a little blood on him. I hope that he could not you. see anything, because his eyes were not adjusted to the darkness. I told him he'd better go home, but he suddenly ran into the cave, right to that stone. I think he saw me put something there. I couldn't stop him, and now he's grabbed the duck. <laughs> no it was way. My meal, my secret. He looked like he didn't understand what it was. I tried to keep my cool and told him it was just a toy I found in the woods. I think it worked and he believed it. But what if it doesn't? And he will tell everyone. He can't speak yet. No. But letting him go is a risk. I thought about killing George. I thought about the tender pork that was in front of me. I've never eaten pork. I could end it all right here. Bro is letting his I'll intrusive his thoughts well, win, bro. And no one will find him. No one will know the secret. But then, George. I heard the distant call of his parents. Their screams echoed through the forest, snapping me out of my fantasy. Come on, I gotta save him. If they find me with George dead, it could end very badly. I took a deep breath and took the duck out of George's hands. I said, let's go find your mom and dad. I couldn't let his parents find traces of blood on the ground. I washed the blood off me. Then I led George through the forest. I oh, found his parents and told them not to go so deep into the forest and keep an eye on their child. I returned to the cave where no one was around anymore, and I was able to enjoy my lunch. Ooh. All right, for a second there, I thought he was going to eat George alive, bro. <laughs> what the heck was that? All right, well, those were some very dark, twisted stories. <laughs> Shout out to Dirty's VO. I'll link them down below in the description. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.